Hello and welcome to what will be a short introduction to the EF Core Sidekick plugin. The plugin is developed by the Dev Magic, and I already just tried it out before I created this video. And I must say that it could really go and increase the productivity and generally the way that we are going to code with Entity Framework. Because with this plugin, we actually don't have to write so much code uh, by ourselves. But of course, I will go and show you. So first of all, go to the devmatic.com and up in the downloads, we can scroll down a bit. And then we have the EF Core Sidekick. So go and download the plugin. Then you will get redirected to the Visual Studio Marketplace where you can just go and download it. So while that is downloading, you can just go and open Visual Studio. And then you can actually go and check if you have all the workloads that we need to actually use the EF Sidekick. So you can just say continue without code. And from in here, you want to go to tools say get tools and features and from in here you want to make sure that you have the asp.net and web development installed and also when you scroll down you want to have this data storage and processing and of course one last thing you have to make sure is that you have the visual studio 2022 and it should be at least the 17th version. So with all this setup, you could just go and close visual studio again and when you install the ef core sidekick you should just make sure that Visual Studio is closed already. And when you come to this screen, you just want to select the Visual Studio Community 2022 and not the preview here. I already installed it on the 2022, so it will only find the preview version that I still have on my PC, but I don't really want that. But you want to go and choose the normal 2022 edition and say install and just go through the installer. So now we can actually just go and create a new project. And because I'm actually not sure that it is compatible with the .NET 8 yet, I read some place that it was in preview, but maybe when you see this video, it will be compatible to .NET 8. So just for this video, I actually want to go and take a Blazor server app instead and then say next. And it doesn't matter what we call the project, but then we want to go and take the .NET 7 version. You could also take .NET 6, but I'll just go with the .NET 7. And then let's say create. I'm pretty sure you could also do it with a ASP.NET Core app. But for this video, we will just stick to a Blazor server app. The next thing I want to do is to go and open the Microsoft Server Management Studio because it is a database in here that we want to connect to. So I do just have a test database set up already. So I'll just go and connect to the server here. And then inside my databases, I do have a lot of uh, databases that I play around with, but the one we want to go and use is this test. So it's just basically a database called, called test. And we go to the tables. And the only thing I have in here is the employee table. And if we right click it, and say select top thousand rows. You can see here, we only have one row in it, which is John and his title is a manager. So now let's go and open Visual Studio again. And when we right click on our project, we should now have the EF core sidekick here. So we do want to go and say new entities from DB. And because I already tested this, then you can actually see the connection to the database. But let's just go and create a new connection to the database so you can see how we set it up. So in this case, we can go and use the Microsoft SQL server here, the SQL client. And when you click on the arrow here on the server name, it will go and find a list of servers that we can use. So right now it didn't really find anything, but a thing that I found out you could just do is actually go back to the SQL Server Management Studio, then right click on your server name up here, say properties, and then go and copy the name here. And then we're just gonna paste it in. And then we do wanna go and say, we wanna trust the server certificate. And then we can actually go and see all the databases that we have. So in this case, I just want to choose test. We can then go and test the connection and it says that the test connection succeeded. So that's, that's okay. So that is basically how you set up the connection. So you can just say, okay. And then over here we have our tables and the DBO. And then inside the DBO, we have our employees table. So we can just tap this on. Then it will automatically go and take the data types and the names of the columns that we have in that table. So we can just go and say next. So as you can see, there is a lot of configurations that you can do. 
I will just go and keep it simple here. And you can also see if we hit the EF Core 7 down here, then it will say that EF Core 8 is in preview, so it will come soon. But maybe when you sit with this, it maybe is already released. So let's just say finish. And then the nice thing about EF Core Sidekick is that it actually go and tell us what we have to do next. So we have to copy this and go and put it inside our program.cs file. So let's open this one and we will just go and paste it right here. So because it is the builder and it's a service in the builder that we want to go and add the DB context to. And then the next thing we want to do is to go and put the connection string inside our app settings.json. So right click and copy or you can just hit this one. And then let's go to the app settings.json and you want to put it in right here. So it is pretty nice that it just go and say what we have to do as the next steps. And it actually create all the code for us with our server name and set the certificate to true. And it also just created the DB context for us. So you can, for example, go to the Dell folder here that it created go to the data context file. And this is now the file that I typically call app DB context, but it will go and extend from the DB context. You can also see that it created this contract folder. You can go and expand it. It's inside here that we have our entities. In this case, it just created one because we only have one table with the employees. So it actually just created this employee object class for us. You can also easily go and create a DTO out of this entity. So you can go and right click. Again, we use EF Core Sidekick, say generate DTO, and then we can go and select all the columns and say next. And then from in here, you can go and target the configuration. So you can go and generate a built-in DTO map, or you can go and generate the data contract attribute. So let's say that we want to generate a built-in DTO mapper, then it will go and add it down here. And then we can go and say finish. And then you again go and see what the next step is. And in this case, it is optional, but you can go and use these line of codes now. And as you can see over in our Explorer, we did get the mappers folder with the employee DTO mapper. And we did also get the a models folder with the employee DTO inside. So the last thing I want to show you in this video is that you can also go and create your own API by using EF or Sidekick. So again, inside our contract folder and the entities, we can go and right click the employee.cs file and then go to EF Core Sidekick and say generate services and APIs. And from in here, it just go and create some custom APIs here. It will get a list. So I just think that it will go and retrieve all the employees from the employees table. And then it will also create another one called get page. But let's try it out and say next. So when we create an API, we will get a lot of new files. For example, if we expand the API down here, we will get the controller directory. We'll also get a validation and a security directory. Uh, this video is just an introduction, so we will not dive into it right now, but it is just to show you how easy it actually is to create all this code. So you don't have to do everything manually yourself. You can just go and hit finish now. And then we just need to go and add these codes here to our program.cs file. And again, you can see this step is required. So let's just take them one at a time. We have this one, which is inside the builder.services and we will add the repository. So let's go and copy this, open the program.cs file and let's insert it. We'll then go back and also take all the other services here and put it into our program.cs file. And then you can see if you use Swagger, you can actually go and put this inside your program.cs file. We have not installed Swagger, so I'll just skip it for now. And then we can go and add this add controllers also. So just copy it and put it inside our program.cs file. So a big thing that I created here is the controllers uh, folder. And we have the employee controller now, where you can see that we can call the API with the controller and the action. And it just put the list to get the list in here and also to get the page. And of course, if you have Swagger installed, then it is it is pretty easy to just go and test everything. But I think that would be it for this video. I hope to make a follow up video where we can go a little bit more in details on how it 
could be tested. So thank you for watching and go and have a nice day. Bye.